Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 64. Please turn to it. Page number 64 and today is our lesson number 14. Today we'll deal with the notion of percentage change. Percentage change. And as, and, and as you can well imagine, when, when one talks about percentage change, the emphasis is on change. How does one define change? It's a very simple question. How do we define change? Change is always defined as change is always defined as what it use what it is rather what it is what it is compared to what it used to be what it is compared to what used to be when we, when we say that the population when I say when I tell you that population of my town has gone up by three percent it's understood that it is going up by 3% compared to what it was before. Nobody goes around saying population of my town is going up by 3% compared to what it is today. Makes no sense. If I tell you that I just got, uh, my boss gave me a 5% raise in my salary, well 5% of what? 5% of what it used to be. The starting point is always the point of reference. The starting point is always the point of reference. We ask ourselves, whatever it is right now, how does that compare to what it used to be? So when, you, when you're looking at the change, the change is always what it is, which is the new number, new number minus, minus what it used to be, which is the point of reference, because that's the difference we're looking at here. What, 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 whatever it is right now, how does that compare to what it used to be? Minus what it used to be, which we call the original number, sometimes it's called the OR number, sometimes it is called the, if you want to be very fancy, some books refer to this as initial quantity. It doesn't matter. That's what it is. So change, and the symbol that, we, that is typically used in most textbooks to represent change is the Greek, le Greek letter delta, the upper letter delta. This is the uppercase in a Greek letter delta, and this is the lowercase. Typically, in most textbooks, when we talk about percentage change, we use the uppercase. The change here is defined as the new minus the old. New number minus the old number. And the importance of this simple concept, it may seem very silly to make a, such a big fuss about it, but the importance of this simple concept, you will see in a few seconds, lies in how the situation is presented to us. For example, I need the room, I'm going to have to erase everything. For example, where can we erase this part? Let's, let's do it in the bottom here. For example, going from going from hundred to hundred and fifty, if I used to make hundred dollars a week, and now if I make hundred and fifty dollars a week, going from hundred to hundred and fifty, well, that's that's a, that's a, that's an increase. That's an increase of 50%. Simple enough. Simple enough. But, but going from going from 150 to 100, let's put it, let's increase increase of 50%. But if you start out with 150, going from 150, if you start out with 150 to 100, that is not a drop of 50%. One more time, 100 to 150 is an increase of 50%, but if you start out at 150 and go to 100, that is not a drop of 150. Why? Because our point of reference is the starting point always. So the question here is, whatever the change is, how does it compare to what you started out with? Well, the change here is 50. It's a drop of 50. The change here is 50, so we have a drop of 50. A drop, a drop will be represented with a negative number because you see the change here, new number, the new number is 100, 
So the change here is going to be the new number minus the old number, and the new number is 100 minus the old number, which is 150, and of course 100 minus, minus 150 is going to give us a negative 50. This negative part tells us that it's a drop, which clearly, which clearly it is, because we can see right here it goes from 100 to 150, but the question is, 50, how does this 50 compare to, how does this 50, the drop of 50, how does this drop of 50 compare to, well, compare to what? Well, compare to what we started out with, which is 150. So compared to what we started out with, this 50 is a third of 50. Let's continue this from the top here. Let's continue this part on the top here, this part right here. So this drop, we have a negative change. The change here is 50. Change is negative 50. And 50 is what proportion of the starting point? Well, starting point was 150. Since starting point is 150, it's a drop of, this is, this is negative one third, which represents a drop of 33%. It's a drop of 33%. But, for the, but if we go from 100 to 150, that's an increase of 50%. Going from 150 to 100, that's a drop of not 50%, but 33%. It's a very simple concept, very simple notion. And even those people who do understand it, for some strange reason, during the exam, the anxiety of the whole thing, and when you're under pressure, for some reason, people end up making boo-boos. Don't do that. So what we're going to do now is actually put down a simple formula that we're going to keep in our mind and we're going to use that formula from now on whenever we have to do the percentage change. And here's the formula. Percentage change, percentage change is to be calculated as the change over the old number. Whatever the change is, whatever the change is, how does the change compare to what you started out with? The starting point is always the point of reference. Let's make a note of it. The starting point, the starting point is always the point of reference. Most likely the word reference is misspelled, don't worry about it as long as you understand it. The starting point is always the point of reference times 100. We always have to do times 100 because if we didn't do the times 100 what will end up will, what, will, what will end up is, are the decimals. For example here 1, one over 3 is just 0.33 and you have to multiply that 0.33 by 100 to get a 33 percent. Do you understand? How do we define change? What well, change put it? I erased it. Change is defined as the new number minus the old number. So let's do that here. New number minus the old number. And now we're going to use this. Now we're going to use this formula here. We're going to use this formula here, and we're going to do the same problem one more time and see what we get. I just wrote it. And now I have to erase it. So in this case, going from going from 150 to 100, this is the, this is the problem that we're going going to going from 100 150 to 100. The new number is 100. The old number that we started out with is 150. And that clearly gives us the negative quantity, and the negative quantity indicates that's the drop. Divided by the old number. Well, what did we start out with? We started out with 150 times 100. You see, we're getting the exact same thing. 100 minus 150 is negative, one, negative 50 over 150 times 100. Times 100. And of course, 50 over 150 is negative one third times 100, and negative one third is negative 0.33 times 100, and that gives us a drop of 33%. But you, but we must remember to do times 100, otherwise we'll get a decimal answer. Of course, when we do a percentage, when we're doing percentage calculation, when we're doing percentage problem, and if you end up with the answer of 0.5, well, 0.5 is actually 50% in the in the context. So that's it. That's the formula we have to keep in mind. That's the formula that we're going to use uh, to do the next few problems that you see there on that page. So let's get going. Enough of the talk. Now that we understand the basic concept, let's get going. 
Just give me one second to get my thoughts together here. I'm trying to figure out where I am. Okay, problem number one on page number 64. Problem number one on page 64. What is it doing there? Oh, we have not done we have not done the problem that he gives you in the book, which is example 216. We haven't done that, so let's do that. Example 216. We're going to do example 216 using this formula that you see on the blackboard and see if we get the same answer. So in example 216, it says an amount goes up from 20 to 45. You see we're going from 20 to 45. So 45 is our new number. 20 is the point of reference, the starting point. So let's do it here, percentage change. So the question simply is, if you go from 20 to 45, what is that in terms of percentage change? Well, let's find out, shall we? Well, obviously it's more than 100% because if had we started out with 20, well, not, not, not the head we started out, we did start out with 20, but had we gone to 40, going from 20 to 40, if you double something, if you double anything, that's an increase of 100%. We're more than doubling it. We're going from 20 to 45. So the answer is more than 100%. We'll find out. New number, which is 45, minus the old number, which is 20, over the starting point. Point of reference is always the starting point. This is, we divide by old number because uh, starting point, starting, rather, original number, for it, the number is always is always the point of reference. Always remember, when we ask ourselves, this is the change, what is the percentage change? What percentage change compared to what? Compared to what it used to be. All number is 45, and times 100, times 100, yeah, times 100. 45 minus 20 is going to give us negative 25 over 45 times 100. This is going to give us some nasty answer here. Well, maybe not. Let's divide top and bottom by. Oh, do you see a boo-boo? No wonder it was giving us a nasty answer. Do you see a boo-boo? Can you catch it? And if you don't see the boo-boo, pause the video. Stare at the screen and see if you can find the mistake I just made. I'm going to give you two seconds. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I just talked about just a few seconds ago of how the concentration laps, lapses. What did I do? What is our point of reference? Where did we start out with? Where did we start out with? Our point of reference is our old number. That is always the point of reference, old number. What did we start out with? What did we start out with? We did not start out with 45. 45 is where we ended up with. We started out with 20. So this change here is, question is, how does this change compare to what we started out with, which is 20, not 45? Oh, for crying out loud, I can't believe I did that. I caught myself because it was I was getting some strange quantities here. I caught myself because I, I had, we had a 45 here, and had we divided top and bottom by 5, at the bottom we would have ended up at 9, and 9 does not cancel out with anything, and I knew that the final answer was a nice round number. As a matter of fact, I know what the final answer is. And it just wasn't making any sense. So let's divide the top and bottom by, uh, let's divide top and bottom by 20 instead of doing by 5. We have a 20 here, we have a 100 here. Let's divide it by 20. It drops out and this is just 5. And this is negative. Don't forget the negative. Negative 20 times 5, which, is, which tells us that's a drop of negative 100. Well, we, we mustn't say, we mustn't say, it's a drop of negative 125 percent. Let's listen carefully. A lot of the times I hear people talk like that. We mustn't say it's a drop of negative 125 percent because it is redundant. Either say that it's a drop of 125 percent or say that it's a change of negative 125 percent. One or the other. A drop of negative 25 percent is redundant because if it's a drop, it's, that's what negative means. Do you understand? We're going to take a couple of seconds now, just a couple of quick seconds to understand why this answer makes sense. We want to see if this answer makes sense. By the way, before I forget it, I forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video. If you want to practice some more percentage problems, 
on the black what you see here the list of uh, videos that you might want to watch if you're interested in improving your skill if you if you're not very good at dealing with percentage problems just type in revise GRE math I know we are not here for GRE just type in revise GRE math day 84 85 only way to 93 there are 10 videos there 84 through 93 day 293 and then you can find revised GRE math day 302 303 304 and 305 there are plenty of uh, videos there, plenty of material there for you to practice on. Understand? We're going to take just two seconds to see if this actually makes sense. Let's do it right here. You see, we started we started out with 20 and we went to 45. So the change was 25. Okay, keep listening. The change is 25, which can be viewed as 20 plus a 5. Well, a change of 20 would have meant 100 percent because 20 that's what we started out with. So a change of 20% is 100% change. Plus a 5, 5, 5 is 1 quarter of 20. 5 is 1 quarter of 20. 5 over 20 is 1 quarter, which represents the other 25%. Which represents the other 25%. Therefore, a change of 25 going from 20 to 45, which is a change of 25, that represents a final change of 125%. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I won't do the problems right now. I think the video has gotten already too long. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.